goals for to persuade you that there are a lot more pros to cons with uh, legalizing marijuana. Um, it's political, social, and economic. Um, now, what is marijuana? I think we kind of all know, but let me give you a heads up. Um, it's the dried leaves and female flowers of the cannabis plant. It can be used as a med medicinal purposes and a recreational drug, or at both at the same time, <laughs> uh, as a narcotic or a mild hallucinogen. <laughs> uh, the main active ingredient is, um, or not ingredient, chemical is THC or tetrahydrocannabin. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, it may have the effects of altered perception of time and space with feelings of happiness and fatigue, or both, along with the munchies. <laughs> um, a little bit of history of cannabis. Uh, earliest known documentation was in China in 32 or 37, 27 BC, where it was widely used for medicinal purposes. From China, it spread to India, where it was more used for recreational purposes, which I think we all know what those are. <laughs> you can smoke it, ingest it, etc., etc. Um, it was used mainly among, uh, especially among Muslims, because uh, in the Quran, uh, alcohol is forbidden because it alters perceptions, which I don't understand why it isn't either, but hey, it's a plant, it's natural, I guess it's better than alcohol. Um, from India, it spread to North Africa, then to Europe by 500 AD, uh, where the Spanish in 14, 1545 uh, carried it to the New World, and later it became uh, the staple, or a staple crop in Jamestown in 1611 along with tobacco and other sorts of agricultural things. Uh, by the mid-1960s, um, I think we all know that it was used more for recreational purposes, and THC was identified among the uh, 400 other chemicals uh, associated with cannabis. Uh, in the 1990s, medical marijuana gained a foothold. It was used with cancer patients. Um, that's mainly where most people think about it, because, hey, when you're in that much pain, you want to relax smoke a joint, ingest a brownie, whatever, you you relax, you calm down, you get a hallucinogenic effect, and hey, you can eat afterwards too. <laughs> um, by the 21st century, many states are legalizing it and making it easier for medical patients to acquire this, uh, aka California. They've made it available for purchase in the stores. Um, they also made felonies, misdemeanors, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, the name originates in Spain. It was originally Maria Juana. <laughs> it's also known as Mary Jane, weed, pod, grass, tea, ganja in India, and Daga in South Africa. Um, the medical uses. In uh, 1997, a, the National Institute of Health released reports possible for possible medical uses. Um, it stimulates appetite, relieves cachexia, which is loss of appetite in cancer patients, HIV patients. Um, I think. It's pretty widely known that it does that. <laughs> you know, you smoke a joint, you, you eat a bag of Cheetos, hey, everyone, everyone's happy. <laughs> um, it controls nausea and vomiting. That's what I thought was pretty cool associated with chemotherapy. You know, new chemotherapy patients, they tend to get really, really sick, and eating just doesn't seem appealing anymore, and they lose weight, and it doesn't help with getting past that tumor and getting over it and past it. Uh, fighting it becomes a lot harder because you're more prone to infections when you're uh, malnutritioned. Uh, it decreases ocular pressure. I thought that was pretty cool in patients with glaucoma. Studies shown uh, that 20 milligrams of THC lowered ocular pressure by 17%. Um, now that's not a significant, in, a significant decrease, but uh, studies are still ongoing with that. Um, it's also used as a pain medication, an analgesic effect. They had a study with 10 cancer patients that showed 10 milligrams, 10 to 20 milligrams of THC did the same as 120 milligrams of codeine. Personally, I think I'd rather have something that grows naturally versus something that's chemically altered in my body. Um, it also helps with neurological and movement disorders like Parkinson's, um, multiple sclerosis. They had animal tests that show it was also, uh, it also had anticonvulsant properties, which I thought was really cool. People with seizures just smoke a joint, hey, you don't have seizures. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, there's also research done on mice that shows that TAC can arrest and reduce the growth of tumors. Um, and recent studies, which I thought this was very strange, um, point to as a way that the THC is a way to prevent, delay, or reduce the severity of Alzheimer's. That's pretty cool. Um, it's also, again, beneficial for people with MS and Parkinson's. It's um, kind of used like an antispasmodic, so they have a little more control over their muscular movements. 
Um, there's also studies out there showing exercise can help with that as well, so hey, you don't have to go the illegal route. <laughs> All right, um, there's obviously a very big political debate over this. Um, there are campaigns against it, campaigns for it. We all know the above the influence ads, it ruins lives, tears families apart, leads to hardcore drug use. Um, there's the MMAD, which are Millions of Mothers Against Drugs. Their whole, they have a whole link on their website dedicated to uh, push for marijuana to stay illegal and that it shouldn't even be used for medical purposes because as many politicians say, even if it's available legally, people will still find a way to abuse it. I mean, we see pill poppers all the time, that's legal. They get legal drugs and they get high and people die from it. Um, the campaigns for it obviously are pushing for the more medical uses and hopefully in the future legalization all around. Um, the federal penalties, I don't know if you guys are aware, if um, you're caught with, a, in, with the possession of marijuana and any, any amount, you can spend up to, um, from 15 to 90 days, up to three years in prison with a thousand to five thousand dollar fine. Uh, if you sell it, or you cultivate it, uh, you can spend, it's considered a felony, and you can spend five years to life with a $250,000 to a $1 million fine, depending on how much you have, but it ranges from 50 kilograms to 1,000 kilograms, or 50 plants to 1,000. That's an entire field, that's crazy. <laughs> um, in the media, they, they describe it as the gateway drug. They, they claim that musicians and uh, movies downplay it, like Harold and Kumar, you know, Bob Dylan, that it's, just kind of an out of your normal life, you get a break from things that are going on. Um, it leads to more serious drugs, like I said. Uh, there's, they said, actually there was one study out there that um, those that use marijuana 50 times a year are 140 times more likely to progress to harder drugs like heroin, uh, cocaine. They want a better high that lasts longer, and I think we all have friends that have gone down that path, and it's unfortunate. Um, I personally have had friends that never went down that path. They smoke a little marijuana and hey, everyone has a nice time. They eventually grow out of it. Some people don't. Some people do it well into their older years, which, I mean, it's an occasional use, but still, like, I mean, if they get caught with it, it could ruin their life forever. And they're usually, these people are really good people. They don't do anything wrong. They're not felons. They don't steal. They don't kill people. They don't, you know, get in a car and drive, you know, drunk or anything. and. Personally, I've seen a lot of potheads get on the road and they are more scared to get caught by the cops. They're generally going under the speed limit than over. <laughs> um, that brings me to my, fourth, uh, my fifth point, rather, the positives of legalization. Um, obviously, we will have less prison overcrowding, a lot less people going to prison for these, for basically uh, smoking, selling, or cultivating a plant. I mean, that's like growing flowers in your backyard that happen to, if you eat them, cause hallucinogenic effects. I mean, it's, it's really silly, I think, to go to prison for, for life for this. Um, also, I mean, when you get out, you have a criminal record now. You, it's harder to get jobs. People think, you know, you're just a lazy bum, or hey, that'll happen again. You might bring it into the workplace, and you're not going to do your job. And I mean, it's, it does ruin families that way. Um, it, can, uh, it can be available for chronic diseases, symptom relief. Uh, many, like I said, many cancer patients are in a lot of pain, and this apparently is as good as codeine. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Um, it can also weaken the uh, Mexican cartel's hold over the drug industry. They actually, there was an article out there in I think, October 2010, they had a drug bust on a member of the cartel and it was, the drug, the drugs that they had, they held in their possession was mainly marijuana and, it, and they summed up to $134 million. I mean, where are they putting this money into, you know, guns and into putting their people into the government to control their violent ways and keep people down in Mexico. I mean, it's a huge problem of in not only the country but along the border towns, and they're bringing it here. And I mean, there was one report where they dumped 50 bodies on the freeway, headless, handless, and foot, feetless, so they can't get any, they pulled all their teeth, any, anything that distinguished them from somebody else. And these people have the power to do this because they're pulling in money from the drugs that they sell. Um, and fourth, I mean, once the government legalizes it, they can make a move to tax it, they can make a move to regulate it, and bring a whole new economic market to light and more money towards our failing economy now. Um, in conclusion, I feel there's a whole lot more positives than negatives to legalizing it. I mean, honestly, I think it's a little safer than alcohol. <laughs> um, much safer than a lot of the, the uh, chemically 
altered drugs that we have available to us legally. Um, and it can benefit <coughs> more as a whole, uh, both economically and socially. Thank you.